I think history is a perspective of the person who is telling it. And today I would like to tell my perspective of one of the biggest events of 20th century, which was the partition of British India into two countries, India and Pakistan. I will tell you the story through three very, very important leaders in this history. The first one, he was born in a Hindu merchant caste. That means that it was upper class. And he grew up to become a lawyer. He studied in Great Britain. Then he moved to South Africa and <coughs> used his lawyer skill there. But he was a mediocre lawyer at best. He didn't have any law skills. But what he had was a natural talent to be a leader and a sense of morality and a very unique philosophy of that time. He used what is now known as non-violent civil disobedience as a way to fight for civil rights for his people. His name was Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, more commonly known as Mahatma Gandhi. In 1950, 15, he came back to India and he transformed the biggest political party at that time, which was Congress, from an elite political party to a grassroots movement which fought for the rights of the Indian people and demanded self-rule for the Indian people for India from Great Britain. And he did that by using his non-violence civil disobedience as a tactic to pressure the colonizers that were the Britain. During this time, when he became the leader of the Congress and instituted these kind of policies, there was another leader. He was also a lawyer, born in a merchant Muslim family in the city of Karachi, which is one of the largest cities in Pakistan right now. He went to London and he studied law there. He came back to India and became one of the most well-known lawyers of his time as well as one of the most famous Muslim political leaders of British India. He was also a member of Congress. His name was Muhammad Ali Jinnah, more commonly known as Jinnah, the founder of Pakistan. He completely disagreed with Gandhi. When he heard about the policies of what Gandhi was trying to do, and when he saw the civil disobedience, he called it political anarchy. And in protest, resigned from Congress, and instead became leader of a different political party, which was just for Muslims, called Muslim League. And he stayed their leader until the end of his life. There was a third leader, much younger than Gandhi and Tina, born into a political family with a golden spoon in his mouth, went to Cambridge University, studied at the best universities, law, he was also a lawyer, traveled all around Europe, getting a bit influenced by the socialist and Marxist tendencies and people of that time in Europe. And at some point went back to India and gave up on his lawyer career and decided to become a politician who would fight for the rights of freedom for his people until the British will finally leave India. His name was Jawaharlal Nehru. He became a disciple of Gandhi. He believed completely in what Gandhi was doing. He, Gandhi was his mentor, like a spiritual father to him. He guided through, throughout his career while Nehru consolidated his power and became one of the biggest leaders of Congress at that time. But not just Congress, he was the biggest leader of whole British India and was not only known in India, but all over the world, to such an extent that he was meeting the leaders like opposition in Spanish Civil War. Mussolini wanted to meet him, but he refused to meet. That kind of leader we are talking about here. These three leaders changed the history of that one big country. Fast forward a bit to 1939 when the Second World War started. Great Britain went into the war and dragged British India along with it without even consulting the leaders from there. Nehru and Gandhi were furious 
They resign from their political positions and vote to protest until they will get the British India free. Jinnah, who had spent last 20 years trying to become a politician which would be respected by everyone, but still was more like a marginal politician who nobody paid that much attention to. But in 1940, he and his party, for the very first time, announced that Muslims are a separate nation from Hindus. And they need a separate country once the British will leave after the war. And this country would be called Pakistan and it will consist of all the majority Muslim provinces at that time. When Gandhi heard it, he called it baffling. When Nehru heard it, he called it Jinnah's political fantasies. They didn't pay any attention to him. Two years later, in 1942, Congress thought they had freedom in their hands and went on a massive civil obedience, disobedience strike all over the country to pressure British to quit right there and then. They didn't anticipate that Churchill was the prime minister and he crushed them. He put all the Congress leadership in jail, 100,000 of workers in jail, completely banned any pol political activity by their party. Which meant that Jinnah finally had the space to make himself the leader that he always assumed he was. There was no rival anymore, and he consolidated his power. Mainly towards Muslim, he became their sole representative on the promise that he will get a separate country for them. So that in 1945, when the war was over and Great Britain had elections and there was a new government who wanted to leave British India as soon as possible, and they released Nehru and Gandhi, and they came out of the jail to a completely different political reality when, than when they went in. Jinnah, which was just a minor political rival, was now a great rival without whom they could not proceed forward with any kind of decisions. And that proved to be correct when there were general elections and Jinnah and his Muslim League won all the Muslim seats and Congress, Nehru's Congress, did not win even one Muslim seat in the whole India. The writing was on the wall. There was no other option but to partition the country. And so, British in a hurry announced that it will be partitioned. All the Muslim majority provinces will be made into a separate country called Pakistan. Except two, Punjab and Bengal, two biggest provinces of, at that time with millions of people living in them, who had slight Muslim majority but very, very significant Hindu and Sikh minority. Congress only agreed to partition if those two provinces will be divided between India and Pakistan. So British, yeah, as they are good at bureaucracy, they created a commission called Boundary Commission, who was supposed to draw the boundaries between two new countries in two specific provinces. And they did it in a matter of weeks. And at best, their decision for boundary were arbitrary. At worst, they were favoring one party or another. Those decisions that they made in few weeks are root cause of many, many problems that India and Pakistan had to suffer, including the Kashmir, which is still a problem between two nuclear-powered nations and hasn't been solved in 70 years. But there was one thing that none of those leaders, and not even the British, saw coming when they announced such partition plan. And that was the fact that once they drew those lines in between two provinces, a lot of people found themselves on the wrong side of the border. Muslims who were now part of India, Hindus and Sikhs who were now part of Pakistan. They feared for their lives because there were already interreligious riots going at that time. So they left everything behind all their homes, all their belongings, went to the nearest first train that they could find and decided to travel to the different country. This is one of the biggest migrations that happened in such a short time. 14 million people left their homes and moved to different countries. Left everything. They had no, nothing to take. There was no option. But that was not even the worst. Half a million people lost their lives during the violence that ensued during this migration. Muslims killing Hindus and Sikhs, 
Sikhs and Hindus killing Muslims equally and with such barbarity that is hard to even imagine in these days. Nehru got what he wanted. He got in India about 80% of its original site, but he was happy to be a prime minister. He remained so until 1962 and molded India into his own image. Gandhi was depressed. His, his, he wanted a united India where all Muslim and Hindus and other minorities would live in peace together. And all his dream was crushed during partition and the violence that happened. But still till the end of his life, till his last breath, he was still fighting for the minority rights. Even to the extent that a Hindu extremist came to him and shot him because he dared to support Pakistan. Jinnah also got what he wanted. He got a country for Muslims, although not to what he imagined. He always thought the whole Punjab and Bengal will be, will be with him and he will be equal in India. Pakistan was small compared to India, had no resources. He died one year later. And although Jinnah himself was a chain-smoking, alcohol-drinking, non-praying Muslim who used Islam as just a political tool to forward his own agenda, that's why he thought that Pakistan would be a secular country. And it was for one year. He tried his best. <laughs> And then he died, and all the people that he had gathered with him shifted back to religion and transformed the country which was supposed to be secular into a religious country. It is important to know what is history. And this is my perspective. Historians still cannot agree on what exactly happened and what those three leaders were thinking at that time. Or is it really was a good decision to partition India? My view is that it was not. And this is why I think now is the time to move forward from that. There is no other option for India and Pakistan but to work together. Forget about the problems that started with the partition, including Kashmir, and develop their people's lives, which are one of the poorest people in the world. Time right now is for peace. Thank you.